All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Heather McLean, Principal Architect at Blackbaud, and I'm going to be your session host today for um, Customer Showcase. How did you make LO do that? Um, before we get started, um, let me just uh, throw up that safe harbor statement. If you were with us yesterday, you know we're obliged to share this. Um, you know, make all of your buying decisions about Luminate Online and Team Razor based on what's in the product today. Um, we also are absolutely going to be talking about customization of your solutions today. So. Uh, just remember to tread carefully because your uh, customizations and the scope of support for those customizations are, are retained by you, the customer. Um, so that's enough of me talking. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel. Uh, Tana, do you want to say hello to the group? You're on mute, so make sure you unmute yourself. Yeah, I was just testing, just testing everything. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to our session. We're super excited to be able to share some of our customizations. And um, yeah, Heather, I don't know how much you want me to talk about here, but I'll just share the, the few facts that we have here. I'm from Denver, born and raised. I've been using Blackbox Solutions for over 20 years um, since I was just a wee little 19 year old and I started at Children's Hospital Colorado Foundation. So 20 years there as well. And I just wanted to share this quote from Nelson Mandela. It only seems impossible until it's done because I think it's very fitting for customizing Luminate Online. It's really the sky's the limit, like with a lot of th with a lot of things in development, but there are just so many things that you can do with the system if you can just figure out how. <laughs> that, that's great and definitely captures the spirit of this event. And thank you for sharing your community profile as well. Um, these are probably three of the most prolific Luminate Online uh, community members. So they are in there answering questions and being very active. So thanks for sharing that link too. So uh, Daniel, would you like to say hello and make sure you take yourself off mute? Hey, uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm probably not the most prolific, but like <laughs> just like a fellow developers trying to make make do like out of the like uh, I mean like uh, limitations that we might uh, encounter. Like uh, like when using Luminate online product and hopefully like yeah I mean like uh, what what uh, I I share with you today like might be useful like uh, and and I'm I'm happy to help like uh, in any way I can like uh, if you have questions and stuff like that I'm I'm doing this like uh, like uh, Blackboard like Luminate online uh, solutions platforms like uh, for eight years uh, since I joined like American Diabetes Association and like yeah I, I'm based in Washington D.C. like Arlington Virginia. We're practically neighbors, Daniel. And and Jeremy might have inspired some of you to even attend this session. He was our web developer uh, who showcased uh, why he was here and what he was be share he would be sharing. So happy to finally arrive at this moment and introduce Jeremy. Make sure you take yourself off mute. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming. I am Jeremy Reynolds. I am with Zero the End of Prostate Cancer impossible to guess at what we do right um i'm in the midwest actually our office is in alexandria in the old town uh dc uh virginia that old area and uh i've been on blackbod uh since convia days about 12 13 years ago and um yeah the first major experience i had was uh actually working with an org that gotten delisted from uh google completely because they had changed names and going through the entire site through uh, the old page builder system to overhaul every single page. It was uh, a lot of fun, um, but you know, another member of the community. And if you're not in the community, give a plug for that. It is the place to be. Um, some of the smartest people, uh, you know, really taking uh, Luminate and Team Razor and, and the other products to the next level. So here I am. Awesome. Thank you, panelists. So we're gonna we're gonna see what LO and Team Razor can do in uh, two rounds, and if we have time, we'll uh, we'll do a, a bonus uh, third round. Um, so we're gonna start with Tana. Thanks. Um, yeah, I will share my screen in a moment. We are going to start with a super simple example, actually, because um, we don't really know um, the different levels of ability and how many people are pretty new to Luminate Online. So we wanted to, to start with something pretty simple. Um, so we are going to look at our My Account page. 
And I'm sorry, I also, I'm going to turn off my camera just for a moment because my internet is not that great and I don't wanna crash out <laughs> while I'm sharing. Um, so yeah, I, I chose to showcase two projects. I chose not necessarily the coolest possible projects, but a couple of projects that I think really have key areas and concepts of Luminate Online for us to share today. So again, if you're new to Luminate Online, I think this is a really great starting project to think about because it's perfect for getting used to S tags and conditionalized content. If you're not new, then you might still get some good ideas from this. And um, in Luminate Online, though there have been some improvements in the last couple of years to the out of the box profile management options in LO, it still might not pull everything together that you want your logged in user to see and do. So um, for, for this one, it's like, why not create a page builder page to just have a fully customized my account experience and portal just the way that your organization needs it. So um, you can see ours is super simple. It's, it's very easy to just create a page builder page for this. We have a very simple design, um, very simple branding. You can then use groups, S tags, conditional statements, and JavaScript to curate this unique um, and easy to use experience for the user. So you would just need to password protect this page, then plug it into your top navigation with a login logout link. Looking at this in detail, you'll see that um, we of course have a welcome section just to confirm back that the person who's logged in is the correct person. We have this alert section that only shows if the user has an active alert and that's just a way that we can really put something front and center. Um, this particular example, this test user has a monthly ongoing donation, but the credit card is expiring this month. So we want to be sure that if they log in, they see this message and are reminded to update it as soon as possible. Um, this example also is a volunteer who has job information that they can view. So we also want to be sure that they, they see that very prominently. Um, otherwise, the quick links area that we have here is just what everybody would see. The most basic brand new user who hasn't done much in our system would see this um, purple My Profile tile that then takes them to edit their contact information, update their password, you know, their email preferences, that type of thing. And then they would also see this dark blue register for an event box so that we can just promote our events in that way to people. But um, this test user has a lot more complicated set settings. Again, they have their recurring gift, so they can click this tile to manage everything having to do with that. They have their volunteer job where they can go to a page builder page that shows all of the detail of what their job is, who their supervisor is, and what they're doing. They have a crowdfunding page set up, which is similar to a team raiser, and this is how they would then go to manage that. They, they have purchased tickets to an event, and we are requesting guest information from them. And then these light blue boxes below are all for various team raisers, which this is my test record. So there's some old weird team raisers on here, but that's where they can then go to their participant center, update their personal page, send out fundraising emails, all of that good stuff. And so um, if we just pop over for a second to just a little bit of this code, we can't go into too much detail, of course, because we have such limited time in this session, but I just wanted to share the example of this this alert then for that monthly donor. Um, this is why this is such a great project to sort of get used to this syntax of these conditionals and using the S tags. This example, it's just a conditionalization for if they are a current sustaining donor, show them this message, especially if they have an expiration date approaching. If they are lapsed, show them a different message that says your card's expired, can you please correct this? And so, yeah, that's, um, that's about as much as I'm going to share with this. But again, just a very simple project, a very great intro into group S tag based conditionalization if you don't have much experience with it. And again, the sky is the limit with this. Um, you can see how easy it is to build on this. You could add a section to your My Account page which shows giving history, customized giving prompts based on recency, frequency, amount, their interest, various stories based on their interests, badges or gamification based on their you know donor activities an image of their constituent manager and contact information for that, like anything that your organization would want to do, you can probably get onto a simple page builder page like this and just customize it. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeremy because Jeremy is going to build on some of those concepts a little bit, but hopefully that was a helpful glimpse at a very simple page. All right. Uh, so yes, and let me know if I too am presenting. I'll hit the buttons here and 
kick the tires and light the fires. All right, everybody. Um, so yeah, so I was going to share a little bit about, everybody can see my screen, I hope here. Um, I was going to share a little bit about some of the ways that uh, at Zero we take, um, you know, one of the strongest things about the whole Luminate Team Razor ecosystem is uh, whether you're using Omatic or Relo or some other sort of way to get your data, you've got so much information about your constituents in the system that you can really slice and dice a ton of information and then change the way that you're presenting the website to those people. Um, there is a great uh, meeting that there was a couple months back where they talked a little bit about, about some of these um, concepts. And so I definitely encourage everybody to check those out if they haven't. Um, talking about rebuilding lists and tasks and groups and queries. Uh, and there's probably also a training if you're in the um, Luminate uh, University Library. So one of the things that we like to do, uh, imagine you've got um, a huge house file with tons of people in it. Anytime you've got a large house file, you're going to have a lot of people who just don't have any engagement. They were a friend that was added into Luminate through a Team Razor tag along, or they just on a whim signed up a newsletter and didn't give you very good information. Their honey, their honey pit um, that are, is used for Google to determine when you're sending out spam. So one of the things that you always want to do is make sure that you actually have a good quality score on people. And Lumine Day actually has a way to build in to do that through their task system. Anytime that you're making a task, you can then go in and you can actually find some different segmentation based on how people engage with you, right? And so one of the things you might want to do is say, hey, I only want to send to people who have joined a team user who have actually logged in and customized their page um, or who have actually sent out an email to people. Right. One of the ways you can do that is through these tasks and you've got this team raisers participant task and you can go down and see how many donations have they raised, um, how many dollars have they raised and do that. Um, another cool one that we've got in here is the uh, the web engagement segmentation which can tell you every time they've logged in, every time they've donated. And how you'd use these is you'd actually take a repeating task and have it look through your database and then give everybody a score and save that onto their record by going into Luminate and um, creating a custom data field to capture that info. And what ultimately ends up happening here is, this is my test record, as you scroll to the bottom, you end up with, in this area, you can see, zoom just a little bit here, that we have these different engagement scores that we've attached to a user record. And so we can actually say how likely when we're saying on email, that's maybe a little bit more risky. It's a little bit more generic. Maybe it's the 10th appeal that we've had in a month because we've got a match campaign going on. We can actually take a look here and say, oh, this user opens their email because they've got a high score. They also click through on a regular basis and you can just limit your send out to them so that you're getting people that you're pretty confident are going to open and then later in the day add in a second send of the same email to the people who maybe are a little bit less likely to open because they've never clicked before but they're still doing their thing um, we use this quite a bit right as one of the many data points uh, so that's one of the things that you can do with tasks but once you've got that i've got a score what I really like to do is go in and actually create groups that stack on groups, that stack on queries, that stack on tasks, that stack on groups. And um, you don't want to go too, too crazy on it because you do have to wait for things to reload that group if it depends on another one. But uh, what we've done is we've got this whole list of suppression that we do um, for our welcome series. We have donors after 14 days, they get a new welcome message, one day, 21 days, 30 days. Well, we use that to make sure if we're sending out an appeal saying, hey, you really need to give, time's running out. If they just gave yesterday, we don't actually have to send it to them as well as everybody else, right? And once you start thinking about this, once you start taking queries and uh, making a query that can look at other queries and look at other uh, systems here, 
um, you can actually create something using the built-in tools here within the query builder using these custom fields where you've captured stuff from your uh, database and use these and or queries to say hey I want them if they're in this group right with this add group clause you can say I want them if they're in this group and not that group or in this group and not that group but in this group and they kind of what you end up doing is almost like if you had a map of all your people in your database and you drew a circle of all the people who open plus all the people who live in Virginia plus all the people who have participated in the past plus people who like the color green and you look for where those overlap that's who you're sending it to so um, that's kind of a thousand foot view uh, but it really really goes deep uh, you can use that same thing exactly like uh, Shauna had that you can um, use it to customize the experience so if you want to pull a tag that gives a kind of heads up display to your users uh, you can do that or you can do it um, one of the things that we do once we've identified people is you can see our emails um, autoresponders we had endurance athletes who reached out to us and they said I really why do you keep showing me a picture of this woman when I'm a guy and we're like really really but hey, if it's going to draw people in, give them a better experience, we'll go for it, right? And so you can see um, when you look at it in our actual team razor, you can see just a little bit of what the code here is. And it's the same thing that you saw with Sean's, that it's just a conditional where you're saying, okay, well, what's their participant type? Um, the name of the class for S tags, you, you mean within the, uh, within the conference here? All right, I'll, well, we'll follow up at that at the end. Um, so I will route trail if not if not keeping in check here. So anyway, the, the TLDR here is that once you've kind of captured this, you can actually reference what are those custom engagement scores and do conditionals. You've got built in S tags like what is the um, constituent ID here, right? Um, and again, just like you can with building groups upon groups on groups, you can take content and make it so that it only really shows to these and the only limitation really is your imagination and your time making a bunch of conditionals. So that's kind of the, the basics of it. And with that, I will turn it over to Daniel. Okay, let me see like uh, my share screen. Yeah, now you, you you already see like uh, how powerful that uh what's that uh, how powerful the s text is like so like uh like uh, what i'm going to share right now is like uh like the, hey we have a way like to share, like uh, embed like page builder like uh, if you want to if we really want to uh, like harness the benefit of the s text like uh, inside of participant center like uh, because like see like uh, sometimes like the reasons why we want to uh, like uh, use that is because yeah, we, we don't want to write an API or Java, rest API JavaScripts or we, we, we just like the, the one liner of the S text. Uh, so like what we, we, we can do like there is like we, we can like use the jQuery load like inside of the custom JS and and then like with the uh, uh, like this like uh, prepend PG rep uh, equal to no. So like uh, like uh, it will it will do like uh, like what like like for, for example this one here. So like this is like uh, actually like uh, our custom participant center like uh, the the home dashboard that we we do like where we actually like embed like uh, these sections like uh, the progress uh, like and then like the uh, like custom next steps with conditional and then like uh, like we we also can embed the milestones like which is like something that like uh, we, uh, cannot be done like out of the box uh, through participant center uh, at least the participant center too. We have the participant center three, but like we haven't really tried that one because like the, the two is still like our uh, workhorse. And the, the way we do that, like, uh, like oops. Yeah, the way we do that, like say like, uh, like uh, say like we, 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 uh, like we, we use our uh, jQuery and then like uh, we, we do like uh, this like I sanitize my, my jQuery so like uh, it, it doesn't uh, counter uh, like uh, conflicted with like uh, the black bot jQuery that is of older and sometimes we have like a different version of jQuery that we want to run and then like in this one see like uh, if you see this one here like these are all like a uh, page builder page like for example in this like uh, out uh, milestone PC2 here like oh, the content of that is like this uh, aspect like where, where uh, I, I like I am like okay like if the 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 participant is a self donor or if the participant 
like has updated the page or if the participant like is part of the group and stuff like that. So like these are these are like some something that like you can do like uh, on participant center too. Like uh, but like I will not recommend that like for participant center three because the the, the way like Blackboard built that like through Angular JS. Like uh, like uh, jQuery then uh, Angular JS doesn't really play that well. Like, so like uh, like they have different uh, ready state. So like uh, like yeah. So like uh, it's not recommended for PC3 right now. But like uh, if you are still like using Participant Center 2 and want to leverage your Participant Center 2, like you can actually do that. Like and here here are like uh, like in the PowerPoint like uh, like we we modify like a, a dashboard HTML. Because like and also like we built like our participant center like uh, out of like the need like we want to make it like responsive, and and participant center too like uh, like as you know like uh, out of the box is not responsive like uh, this is way way before they 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 have like a participant center three, so like we bootstrap that like uh, we we integrate the bootstrap and then like we like uh, in in order to integrate the bootstrap we we include the the bootstrap library and stuff like that. Also, we put the div container for for the jQuery load to uh, to uh, load it like uh, load the content of the page builder into the the uh, empty div like and then like uh, the JS is like where all the things is and like one one thing like uh, you you might be wondering like why why I include this PG wrap equal to no is this is like a a, a secret like uh, so like uh, like uh, like you can embed like a page builder without all the overheads like uh, like all the config like like uh, uh, links like or like uh, dependencies, like uh, it's just going to uh, like include just like the basic like contents, like so. Like for example, this one here. Yeah, uh, hold on. So if we do this and. Let me put the FRID here. So if you see the few source, like it's only going to see like uh, it's only going to show like what we have like on the page builder content, but not the head and the, the 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 rest of the body like that Confio or Luminate online platform comes with like uh, when when it's presented the page builder as a whole. So that's 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 that like uh, like uh, like about our participant center and I'll pass it back to Heather. Awesome. That was an amazing round one, Daniel. And uh, thank you for sharing that secret sauce with the group. Uh, now we're going to enter round two, and Tana, you're up first. You're muted. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> for um, the next example that I want to share, it's our guest information collection form, which is for ticketed events. And I chose that example because it uses custom profile fields, um, custom interactions, the custom interaction API, um, the, U, the U0 and S80 tags to customize autoresponders. So that's the next one we're going to look at. Again, I'm going to turn off my camera just so that I don't have internet issues and share my screen. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this and we are back on the My Account page, jumping straight over now to the Your Guest Information page. And um, just the general overview of this is that the users purchased a set number of tickets, which may be divided across various sponsorship groups or tables, golf foursomes, you name it. So we offer them this form to fill out to provide their guest information, including names and contact information, but it also sometimes would have additional special fields like dietary restrictions, golf handicaps, that sort of thing. And this form dynamically will show the correct number of rows corresponding to the number of seats or guest spots that they've purchased and we're driving that from the custom profile fields. Once they've submitted the guest information on this form, we show them the confirmation page, which is actually the page that we're on right now. And it repop it changes dynamically the messaging a little bit to confirm that they've already provided their information. It repopulates 
their submitted information anytime that they visit this page so they can confirm what they've submitted. And it's accessible, as you saw from their My Account page for as long as this form is active. So they can go back to it as many times as they want. And the guest form itself will also repopulate with their submitted information so that they don't have to just like fill it out over and over. It's easy for them to just go in and edit what they've already submitted if they have changes or additions. Um, and we can pop over there to, to see the actual form. But um, so, so you'd see in this example, like this user, this is a weird just test, but they would have a group with various spots in it. They also um, got individual seats. They can put in their guest information here. They can mark that they're not using a particular spot and let us know if they want to donate it back. We're also collecting at the bottom any special comments and confirming what how they want their sponsorship listed. So. Um, Again, the several key areas of Illuminate Online that are being used here are again, groups and group-based S tags, which will drive that conditional content access to the form for um, anybody who actually should access it, hiding it for people who shouldn't. Um, that dynamic content based on whether it's been submitted or not. Then the custom profile fields, I think um, Jeremy already showed those for a second, but hopefully everybody's aware of where those are. Just to show for this test user, we've got several custom profile fields configured for this, these individual seats too. Table two has two seats. Um, and then we read that using the using jQuery to calculate the number of fields to create through an iterative loop based on how many table groups, individual tickets are in these fields. We also use this to store that other information, uh, information such as the sponsorship name. And then to pop over to the custom interactions, um, you'll see that we have three custom interaction types here, event guest information, and then archived and retired, so that when this form is done being used, we can just completely clean, clear this out and not have it affecting any other form in the future. And um, the interactions go here in order so that then we can read them again from, um, we, we're writing actually JSON, and this is the best place in Luminate Online to be able to store this amount of data because um, the interactions are limited to, I think, a thousand characters, and that's about the best that you can get. So the code is actually taking the JSON object and breaking it down into um, sections of fewer than a thousand characters. And then, so that's why, like in this first example, you would see that, or let me let me sort this by the most recent ones because my test record is kind of a mess here, but. Um, so yeah, for like this most recent event, oops, sorry, scrolling up, there would be the first submission and then the second submission. So then um, the form is then reading those in order again and combining the JSON object again to then repopulate the form. And so um, I also want to just give Noah Cooper a shout out and note that we use his Luminate Extend JS library to use the Interactions API, it makes it much easier. And I will pop a link into the chat for that. Um, I've mentioned that the form then archives the older submission so that it's, it's always adding a fresh submission. And then along with submitting to these interactions to the API, the submit action also is writing to an underlying scraped survey form. And the benefit of that is that you can trigger an autoresponder to go to the user and you also have backup data stored in the survey data in case there's any error with the interaction API. So um, that's kind of it. It's optional for this to, in the beginning of the user's journey and when they buy their tickets, if you are selling them on a calendar event form, then you can configure the custom profile fields to just grab the right amount of tickets just based on what they're buying on that form. So you can automate that side of things if, if you wish, or you can just manually update those custom profile fields. Um, and then also optional is that autoresponder that gets sent by the scraped survey that we're also submitting. You can use the U0 and S80 tags to set session variables to then get whatever data you want into that autoresponder. Just out of the box, you don't have a lot of options for auto for autoresponders from surveys, but that's a sort of workaround to get them. And I also have a few links to community posts on that, so I will go ahead and share those in a moment. But um, that's about it with this project, and so I'll turn it over to Daniel for his next one, but hopefully that also gives a few ideas on sort of creative ways that you can try to use what you've got to work with in Luminate Online to store data and then call it back out and use it for a really customized solution like this. 
All right, Daniel, I will stop sharing my screen. OK, the next thing that I'm going to share, like, uh, and also, like, uh, I second, like, uh, Tanya, like, uh, Louis, like, uh, like, use of, like, Noah Cooper library, the Luminate Extend, that will make the, like, writing the REST API much easier, because, like, right nowadays, like, we, we write APIs, like, across uh, domain and stuff like that, and his library handles that, like, just fine, like, so, like, uh, what, one, one of the things that, like, we do, like, uh, recently, like, with, uh, like, that APIs, like, we, we, we use the get, uh, get calendar, like, the calendar API things, is the get months uh, events uh, uh, API in which like uh, we uh, presented the the calendar like so like it can render like a, a like different kind of like uh, rendering so like uh, this in this one here like uh, this is all events calendars like regardless like uh, where they are and and like what programs they are but on top of that like we 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 have like the same uh, API that like we use like to uh, render like uh, pro like uh, events that is a uh, program specifics in this case like uh, is ask the experts events, and and uh, and also like we can like uh, like also like use it for like like local office like region based events like so like these are all like same same uh, API that is like get months events now like uh, like. Uh, like uh, of course, like uh, in the get months events, like there is no like uh, uh, like out of the box. Uh, what's that like a uh, default filtering? Like uh, that says like, hey, what if like uh, we want to group this like this one, that one? So like uh, we 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 try to find something like uh, uh, creative. Like uh, in this case, like uh, we we know like uh, that like like uh, this can can return. Like uh, I mean like uh, the events like uh, can be associated with interest, like Luminate Online interest. So like we we are actually using the Luminate Online interest like ID. To uh, this display, okay, like uh, if this is ID one 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 one, like uh, like uh, for us ex experts, like so like pull everything that's that uh, uh, one 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 one, and then like it it will display like uh, for for your specific rendering, like rather than like uh, the all events uh, like things here, and this is like uh, done in Drupal, and like we 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 call the the API like uh, through like uh, oh, oh that, that is also like one, one more. So like uh, like like if you are like doing a direct request API, like you have to whitelist your IP, and like in our case, like we are maxing out like our IP, and uh, this is like more like digital digital holders. Nobody knows like which IP like should be removed and stuff like that. So like uh, if you are encountering that, and like like uh, in this case, like Blackboard or Luminate Online cannot uh, like expand more more uh, IP like uh, for whitelisting. So like uh, you can actually embed this like. Uh, in a responsive iframe that is cross domain like meaning like this is an iframe actually like if you see this one here the oops yeah the, the, these are all like in an iframe but like you you don't see hold on see this is an iframe here, but you don't see like uh, the need to scroll and stuff like that. Like see, like uh, it will expand. See if I say like show more, like it will expand more and and show more, it will and then like. So like uh, the library that I'm using here, like which is also a, a good library, like is this one. So like uh, this, like uh, it's using like post uh, message HTML to, to tell like okay, like uh, the the ch the children has the height of this and the width of this, and it will adjust to the parents like uh, uh, where the iframe is being embedded. So, this these are some some cool cool things that like you can try and and do like uh, and yeah. Uh, on top of that, like I'm using like uh, the handlebar like uh, to create the templating like uh, like this like look and feel things. And with that, uh, like I'm sharing, uh, I'm passing this to Jeremy. Jeremy, remember to unmute. You know, I hit present and then it all minimized and I was like, oh no. All right, so let me go back to presenting here, guys. All right, I hope you're excited because this is my best customization. Um, let's talk about getting into your FTP instance of Luminate and TeamRaiser. So this is getting more into the advanced level. Um, this is probably the most, one of the most powerful things I've seen. Uh, Again, plugging the community, and I'll definitely plug uh, Noah Cooper too. He is an incredible guy, uh, and he is incredibly talented. And most of the cool stuff you see, we have cribbed off of him. Um, so definitely check out his stuff. Uh, find his GitHub and uh, take a look at the stuff he's done between Luminate Extend. He also has a library for Angular, though I don't know how experimental, because um, most of the stuff I've seen him do has probably been hand coded. Um, 
So here's the scenario. Uh, we can use, and this is a pretty common technique, the S51 tag lets you create a page builder page where you can hold all kinds of information, right? So like, let's say you've got a really complicated conditional. Uh, you really are afraid that somebody who is an end user is going to go and edit in HTML mode and nuke your code, right? One of the things that you can do is you can use a reusable page. Um, you'll see, you know, a lot of files in our page builder. You'll see start with this reuse, okay? And what that does is what you can have is maybe it's settings, maybe it's conditionals, maybe it's, it can be really whatever you want, right? Um, so one of the techniques that a lot of people use is they will create a, a reusable that has their conditionals or it has um, the U tag, which lets you create session variables that you can apply. And how that works in practice is uh, that, let's say you have a donation campaign like this one, where you've got the same exact form but it's specific because you need it coded in Razor's Edge. You needed general gifts versus emails versus your direct mailer, right? Same exact form, but you have really any edit you have to make has to be made to all three, and that sucks, right? So what you might do is instead of actually having it built into the form itself, this is a pretty common thing where you'd make an HTML caption within the form and then have this all this code that's built into the um, specific uh, donation form. What you can actually do instead is put that into one of these reusables. And now when I've created my donation form, um, you get to have it just be this tag right here. So go from this to this, that's great. Right. And what you're doing is basically you're saving all of that into your page builder. Um, you, all that extra custom code goes in here. But Jeremy, you say you said you were going to show us the FTP stuff. And I am. All right. S51 is your normal tag for taking stuff and putting it somewhere else. S84 does the same thing, but it lets you upload a file. OK, so imagine, if you will, you're developing and you're doing that S51 and you throughout the course of the day have 120 edits that you're making. Just try this. Nope, that didn't work. Try this. Take you forever, right? Um, you got to wait for the system to reload each time. Well, what you could actually do is use S84 and take all of that code and put it onto your FTP site and then upload it. So this is my IDE editor. It's uh, Sublime Text and it's got an FTP program in on the right. So imagine instead of having to load everything through S51 and do it in Page Builder, you get an advantage there that everything can be saved in multiple versions. But when you're developing and you're making 200 edits in the course of a day, you don't really want to have to keep reloading and reloading and reloading. So what you can do instead is put this up on the server and then make your live reload. So here's an example of what that looks like in practice, right? Um, so this is our RunWalk site, just random thing. Uh, when I'm developing on it, I might be doing some heavy jQuery or some JavaScript or even some um, doing some angular uh, work in here and i really don't want it showing to external users what i've done is i've uploaded a whole bunch of files to the server and um, made it so that there's a conditional that'll only show if it's at my ip address and my constituent id and when i log in check it out so now all of a sudden i've got this box that i formatted all of this is being driven by the code here Right. And you can see it's a simple conditional. It says what's constituent ID. What's cool about this, though, is I can actually edit live and you do that. And when I refresh the page, there it is. Right. Nobody in the world but me can see this. Even if somebody had my login, I actually have a lookup that says, am I at the right IP address? And so only at my computer in my house or somebody stealing my Wi-Fi with my password is going to ever see any of the stuff I'm developing. Fantastic but it goes deeper, right? Um, using this technique, what you can actually do is take all kinds of things. Now, instead of, in the past, you wouldn't want to have like 200 different reusables uh, that you're using with the S51 tag on a page, right? But what if you are doing something that just has a bunch of redundant code and is really hard to look at, right? Check out this. This is our email newsletter. Look at all the blue code. 
right? To do email, if you want to do it in a way that doesn't break on certain clients, you need to use a lot of tables, a lot of CSS, a lot of containers, and you really have to test it. You really need to be using a third party library like using um, Ink or using uh, Foundation for email or H uh, HTML. Um, what if you could take all this code and replace almost all of the redundant stuff with a simple S84 tag? Well, that's what it ends up looking like. So instead of all this, zoom out and see just how much there is, right? We end up with this, right? And this is really cool because what I've done is I've taken all this code here and just simply put it into a pretty easy to use S84 tag. And when you look at it, you can see. So what what is this actually now that it's gone? Oh, it is uh, my email newsletter headline style CSS, right? Well, this is really important when you start doing some fancy elements like a button that you want to have a mouse over. In email, that is just not something you can do in old school emails, unless you actually have a, about 150 lines of code for each button. I have condensed that down to two lines of code, two tags. And all of this is actually run by um, a big long snippet of code that is up on my FTP site. And so when you go through here, well, what you can see is all of these little pieces of code, they're just little snippets um, that I can reference and I've got them in folders. So, you know, let's say I wanted to do a responsive two column container on an email. That is really hard to do, honestly. Um, not for me. All I need to do is go in here and put together the thing. And I've got these different containers. So I just look in here, my email columns three, actually, yeah. And and so I put in the top part, my content, column one, start, you know, and just go through here. And I basically can make a three column layout without all the pain. So that's just brushing the surface. I could go all day, but I won't. You're welcome. Um, I'll toss it back to you, Heather. <laughs>